we've got the very first ever transgender lawmaker from Montana. You might have heard of her because Representative Zoe Zephyr made headlines a few months ago after she was barred from the House floor. Now, her Republican colleagues accused her of breaking the rules of decorum after she spoke out against the state's ban on transgender care for minors and other anti-LGBTQ bills. We had the honor of speaking with Zoe earlier, Representative Zephyr, I should say. Please take a look. Representative Zoe Zephyr, such an honor from Montana's 100th House District. Please welcome to the show. Yeah. Woo! Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So Representative Zephyr, in honor of pride, let's start with something celebratory because we hear you just got engaged. So <gasps> doing the the whole yes <laughs> yeah it was absolutely lovely you know the s legislative session had been difficult for a variety of reasons and culminated in those big moments at the end and my then girlfriend Erin Reed came out to be with me after the session and it felt like a perfect moment to say you know what I can't wait I want to promise forever we've been talking about getting engaged later in the summer but the ring came in and I was like I want forever with you, and I need to make that promise right now. Uh, That's so beautiful. Romantic. That's beautiful, beautiful, and it's also unfair. Erica got the beautiful question. Yeah. I gotta get to the somewhat unfortunate particular, so get, let's get right into it. You gained attention when you were banned from the Montana House floor after Republicans of that state voted to censor you after speaking out about the state's anti-trans leg legislation. Tell us about what happened and just why it matters so much. So the Republican supermajority had brought a handful of bills targeting the LGBTQ community, from bills banning our books, banning our art forms, our histories, our health care, and even in Montana, in Senate Bill 458, writing us out of code entirely. Wow. <laughs> and I spoke out against this legislation. I spoke out against the very real harms that these bills bring uh, with personal experience, having seen the suicide attempts that came from trans teens in my state. And when marginalized communities are rising up and saying, these bills are hurting us, it wasn't enough for the Republicans in my state to pass those bills. What they needed to do was silence those who were trying to hold them accountable. Wow. Let me ask you this. At least 18 states have enacted laws restricting or banning gender-affirming care for transgender minors, including in Montana. Why do you think these laws are also bad policy? So they're bad policy because when it comes to our health care decisions, if, if you had a child with diabetes, if you had a child who had uh, Marfan's disease, you would turn to every major medical association and say, what are the best practices? You right. would rely on your doctors, on your endocrinologists, on all of the specialists. And that's how gender-affirming care works. If a trans youth is insistent, persistent, and consistent, and that's the DSM-5's definitions, in their gender dysphoria, then you go to your doctor, you go to your therapist, your endocrinologist, and you take slow and careful steps to get them the care that is approved for by every major medical association. And to say, no, no, this is the one instance where government should step in, mm. in our healthcare decisions, that, that to me is just inherently bad policy on top of being discriminatory mm -hmm. in allowing these care for cisgender uh, teens, but not allowing it for trans teens. Mm. So what would you say to people who are for these types of laws and think that they're necessary to protect kids from making decisions that they may regret later? So I would say talk to trans people in your life. Trans people know that when we transition, we come into a resonance with ourselves. We get to live full, authentic lives. I would not be able to do the work I do in the legislature without having transition. And when it comes to youth, remember that A, this is done carefully and slowly in conjunction with doctors and following best practices. Um, but B, to make it the child who is trans and wants to transition, to make them go through a puberty in alignment with their birth sex, that's tantamount to torture. Wow, well said. Let's switch gears here. It's Pride Month. I'm curious, what does pride mean to you this year? When I saw you hold that mic up, Pulitzer Prize photograph, that is what pride meant to me. So, you know, just a huge moment on the floor. What does it mean to you? You know, I, a year ago, I gave a speech in Missoula, Montana, my home, and I said, pride is a sanctuary uh, where we buffer ourselves with community from the attacks that we, we are facing. We get to celebrate one another. I also said pride is a protest. It's where we stand in defiance of people who want our eradication from public life. And we say, we will not go back into the closet. We will exist and we will exist 
together in community. And in these moments as well, pride feels like a never ending font of joy. And I feel all three of those things, the sanctuary, the protest and the joy throughout me um, throughout this month of June. Wow, you have an incredible future representative, Zoe Zephyr. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. We are honored to have you, a very important interview. To find out more about Representative Zephyr and to learn more about her campaign, check out her socials at Zoe and Behold. <laughs> I love a good pun. All right, thanks again. <laughs> she really does. That's so good. She's gonna <laughs> walk with that. I'm gonna yes. love it.